All right. This is a video for typesetting uh, for letterpress. I'm gonna go over the materials you need. You have to have a composing stick. You're gonna need a California job case. So that's underneath these boards here, which I'll show it better in a moment after I talk about the spacing and things like that. And you need a sheet like this, the layout of the California job case, especially if this is your first time setting type, this is very helpful. It's otherwise, I don't know how you're gonna know where the letters lay in the case. So this is the way that the letters are in there. You can see it's not alphabetical. Here you can see that they are, these are the capital letters and these are the lowercase. You can see your numbers here. You can see some ligatures, that's FF, FI, FFL. And all typefaces don't necessarily have ligatures. A lot of serif uh, faces, not sans serif. I'm gonna be setting some Spartan 18 point type today. And I, there's no ligatures in this set. Um, but you can see too, the layout of the job case was for speed. Um, sort of the purpose was to put some words that you set repeatedly like T-H-E and I-S and A-R-E, they're in there so that you can do it quickly. So if you imagine like when they were setting newspapers and people were standing in the shops just setting at you know lightning speed, uh, they just needed to be able to do it very quickly. And then you can memorize the case. And once you have that, you probably don't need this any longer, but we're gonna use this today. So you should set this in a place where you can see it as your setting type. So I'm gonna move this out of my way. And I just kind of set it in front of me. Um, so this is what we're gonna be setting today. This sentence, two sentences, everything is still weird, but someday it won't be, I hope. We're gonna set that. And so you need your type and I'm using 18 point. I'm gonna be using 20 pica leading. So I have two slugs, which are six point wide and two leads that are each two points. And I'll talk more about that uh, when we get to it, when we're setting, but the sizes are based on the pica system, picas and points. Um, so this is picas and points that you see on the job stick, on the, on the composing stick, those are picas. So we are gonna set on 20 wide. So this is set to 20. You can see that here. This number is 18, 19, 20. And I'm gonna use this leading that's gonna fit right in here. We'll put them in one at a time. And when we get to it, I'll show you, but that's that you need. So you need leading, the job stick, and then you do need spacing. So I'm setting 18 point. And what I recommend is to set up a galley tray. So grab an empty galley tray and put all of the spacing in largest, from largest to smallest. So this is 18 point M. I'm tipping this up so you can see 18 point M. And that is the largest and that is a square. So I can kind of talk briefly about the sizing system. So this is 18 point square. The next size down is an N, E-N, and that is half of the M. The next size down is three to the M. So that's gonna take, that would take three of these to make an M. The next size is, that's a three, is four to the M. So it would take four and then five to the M. And then the smallest size you need to get out is the thin. And that is two points. And sometimes you can have one point in there. I don't think I have any one, mostly it's two point. And then you also need the brasses and coppers. So I have a set here and they are in this box that's labeled, these are the eight, the 10, the 12, the 18. So brasses and coppers are the thinnest kind of spacing material. And you can see one of each of those here. So the brass is one point and the copper is a half 
of that. And I can't eat, to show you on the camera this way, you're probably not going to be able to, you can barely, it's blurry. They look about the same, but they're not. This is like, it's almost like paper thin. And then the brass. You make sure that these are very flat. They're not bent. If they're bent, they are not usable. So you can put them into the hell box, which should be in the type shop. And that's where you put type that's been damaged, type or spacing that's been damaged. So I'm gonna keep my spacing. I've already, I already know what I need, but uh, just keep that handy, your brasses and coffers if you need them. So this galley, and so again, set them so that you have your M, N, three to the M, four to the M, five to the M, and then fins if you can't fit that on your tray at the end. I just like to keep them in this order. That way I know what I'm reaching for and where they're located. Um, oh, and I did want to talk about the M. So this system, you've probably heard this, like an M dash and an N dash in typography. So an M dash would be all the way across the body, the top of the 18 point in this, in this case. The N would be half of that. So that's an N dash. The way an M dash is used is almost like um, an, uh, not apostrophe, a comma. It's sort of a pause in a sentence. An N dash is what you would use between dates, like January 5th through the 16th or whatever. You, it's not a hyphen, you would use an N dash. And then the next measurement down is a hyphen, which is probably about a three to the M, maybe even a four, but now it's probably a three to the M in width. It's just for hyphenated words. And sometimes at the end of a line you can put a hyphen if you have to break a word. So that way you can kind of have in your mind how those sizes work. I'm gonna move this out of the way and then we can set some type. So I'm gonna keep this sentence out. I'm gonna move my covers. So this is my job case. So for you, you probably can't see the whole case. Let me see if I can back it up just a little bit. But you know the layout from looking at that layout sheet that we have. So when we start setting type, one of the key things you wanna do is hold the job stick in the correct way. Um, you wanna hold it firmly in the palm of your hand so that the little knee that can be removed in and out. You can just lift this and move it. And so you wanna set it to 20. If it's not already there, set it to 20. And then that should gently be able to go into position because there's these notches here. Most job sticks have this. Um, and so it should comfortably go into place. Um, I'm gonna say this and you may not have the same situation and uh, it depends on who is watching this, but I like to set on letting that fits the furniture. We haven't talked about furniture yet, but there is the way that you lock up type and forms into the letterpress. You use furniture, you use facing material when you're setting type, and then you use wooden or metal furniture to lock it up. I like to set on that standard system and 20 pica is one of the uh, furniture sizes. When we get into printing, we can talk more about that but it's very important and it's just gonna make your life so much easier and make my life easier um, when you set on the correct and standard size um, letting. So please do that. So hold this into the, firmly into the palm of your hand. It's a very stable position. You can wrap your fingers around. You can use your shoulders instead of your hands and your forearms to hold this. You're, you're using your body. It's better ergonomically for your body to hold the type like this. And this way, when you're setting, you can also use your thumb to hold your type in place as you're setting, and you'll see how that works as we go along. So the first thing you wanna put in there is a slug. So I showed you that spacing that we're gonna use. We're gonna go with, we wanna set a foundation around our type so that it's not uh, fragile, it's not gonna fall over and uh, it's, it's, it's a firm foundation. So we're gonna start with a, a six point slug. And then we're gonna start our line with an M space. So that square space is gonna go in here. 
And it doesn't matter so much about the nick here. I'm going to talk about that one as I set the first piece of type in. But um, you know, if you want to keep it face down, that's fine. So we're going to start with an M space. You can also start with an N if you would like, if you feel like your line is not going to fit. And as far as figuring out your lines, how big, you know, it depends on the type size that you're using. Um, and it depends on how big, how wide each, each letter is in that alphabet. So it can be 18 point, which is the height, but it could also be a very wide typeface. It's just going to take up more room. And so I do recommend that if you have a digital version, we do have this technology, so we can, we can do this. Um, if you have a digital version of the typeface, you can use that to sort of do a little sketch. And so I'm using Spartan, Spartan book. I don't have Spartan on my computer, but I have Futura, which is a similar typeface. It's not exactly identical, but it is a similar typeface. And so I did 18 point Futura here. And I determined that 20 pikas is gonna be about what I need and that that would fit. And so that's how I determined that. Uh, it depends on what you're setting. You would have to figure that out in advance. Sometimes you can't figure it out. Sometimes you just have to hope for the best and you may have to make an adjustment. And if that's what you have to do, that's fine. But I, I like to do that. I like to do a little sketch uh, before I come into the type shop and just have an idea of before. And it, like I say, it is not going to be identical because the way that a letter sits on the body of a metal type is not going to be the same as something that you type in digitally. It's just not going to flow the same way. It's not going to look the same. Okay, so we're going to start with our M space, and then we're going to set the first word, everything. So when you're setting type, you're going to set, now I'm holding this so that the type's going to go in here upside down, but not in reverse order, but just upside down. And so my first letter is an E. And so if you look at this, you can see that there is a little nick, that little curved cut in, in the foot and the front of the type here. This is the baseline. That's gonna indicate the baseline of the type. So when I put that in, I want the nick down, that's what it's called, nick down, against my thumb basically. So that way, as I'm setting, I, I can set my word and I can see that nick all the way across and know that my letters are right. And here's the thing though, you can always, um, correct it in the bed of the press. So it's it's not a big deal if there's an error and there's probably going to be, you could have damaged letters, you could have you know all kinds of problems, but we'll troubleshoot with that when we get there. So you can try to type set and, and, and proof your type as you're doing it and kind of look at what you're doing, but at the same time, don't worry too much about it. Uh, okay, so nick down, and then I'm gonna set the rest of the line. So I'm gonna move this out of my way. So I'm setting the word everything. Every T H I N T. Okay, so I've set that first word, everything. And now I wanna put a space and I have to physically, any spaces that you see when you typeset, that is physical material that's filling that space. Uh, everything, and I use four to the M spacing between words. So I grab over, I'm reaching over into my material, my spacing material, and I don't even, I have to look, but I know where it is because I put them in that order. So I put a four to the M, and then I set the word is. And then I need another space to the M. Still. Yes. And I'm looking at the nick across the bottom here, making sure that my letters are all in the right position. S T. I. So I'm I'm spelling the word in the way that it's spelled, not trying to do it backwards. Sometimes I've had students set the words backwards. That's not what you do. You set them in order. It's just upside down to you not backwards, still, space, weird, 
W P. I I'm going D. A comma, not period, comma, okay. So I don't know if that's showing all that well, but you can see that that's my line. Um, so when you look at type, you're gonna see like, this is YP, this is a P, and it looks like a Q. So you've heard that term, mind your P's and Q's, that of oh, type reference. So looking at type like this, the letter is on there backwards. So it looks like the letter Q to us. It's because it's right reading, it is a Q. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind that having the type case be correct is key. And sometimes that can happen, especially in a shared shop, things get misplaced, you know, it's just something that happens, it's just human error. And so you do need to be aware of that, but you don't have to inspect every letter. Like I said, you know, we're gonna proof the type when we print it and we can always make corrections as needed. So, um, okay, so now we've got this empty space at the end of the line and we have to fill this in. So I'm gonna start with the largest material that I have, spacing material, and that is the M. And I'm going to put in as many as I can until I can't fit another one. So I put three in there. Now, if I try to put one more, it doesn't fit. Okay, so I'm going to go down to the next size, which is an N. And I don't like to have small spacing at the end because like I was saying, we want to build a foundation. We want it to be stable. So what I usually do is I'll switch out and put the smaller thing in and put that inside. And then I'll put the M on the outside there, if you can see. And now I have space for one more piece and I feel like this is just from practice and from doing it, I feel like a three to the M is gonna go there. And that fits almost perfectly. And so sometimes I'll take out, like I don't like to squeeze that in there either. So I'll take out that last M and I'll put the three and then put my M back in. And this is what you want. So when I let go of that, it's still sticking up. You can see that. And I have to push it down, but I don't have to force it down. That's what you want. You want a snug fit in the line and you wanna be able to um, keep, see how I'm keeping my thumb. And I've got this tilted back a little bit. I'm not holding it flat. I'm, I'm actually tipping it down on this end because gravity, we want gravity to work for us, not against us. Um, because gravity is not your friend in the type shop. It, you know, you had to be in charge of it and, and know that you don't want things to spill. You don't want to pie your type, which is to drop your type and it just goes everywhere and you have to clean it up. We don't want that. So we keep it tipped back, um, but I'm holding my thumb and then I just kind of see if I need, if it's jiggling at all and it's not, and that's what we want. So now I'm going to put one of my pieces of leading in and this is that two point leading. And often you'll see um, indicated and in writing, you'll see uh, type described as being set 18 slash 20 or 10 slash 12. And what that means is there's two points of letting added to the body of the typeface. So that means 10 points set on two points of letting, which makes it 12. So that's 10 over 12, 10 on 12, or here we've got 18 on 20, because I'm adding two points of letting. And that's just a good way to think about typography. That's a, a standard way of, of marking that. So, but that's the standard kind of like when you're typing and you hit a return, that's what that is, is two points of letting. And you can also see like the type doesn't come down to the bottom of the body. And so that's the thing too, when you're uh, using the computer, I, 18 point might be the measurement of the actual letter. This is called the X height of a lowercase letter. The lowercase X is the X height. So that might be 18, or maybe it's the capital that's 18, or you, who knows how it is, but in metal type, the 18 is actually this height, this body. So not the letter itself. You can see that that does not fill. 
Um, and there are times as well that I don't use leading between lines, especially when I'm setting display type and I want the lines to stay closer together. I will not use leading. I'll just set them flush to each other. Um, but yeah, we're just doing it the standard way today. All right, so I've got my slug, my 18 point line, and then my two points of leading. So now I'm gonna set the next line. So I start with an M just like I did in the first line. Start there. And I'm going to set the line, but someday it won't be, period. So I just go through, grab my letters, set, but, space, four to the M, someday. Mm -hmm. Apostrophe. So make sure that you're putting that in correctly. Might have to check that. Won't be. So I need a space. So B and then period. So I have to come get period. And then I'm going to set the spacing to fill in the rest of that line. So that's not going to be identical. Um, so I did want to talk about briefly centering type. So if you wanted to set, we're setting this just like this is typeset, uh, flush left, rag right. So the flush edge is on the left, the soft rag edge is on the right. So that's how we're doing this today. But if you wanted to center your type, it's very simple to do. All you would do is set the same amount of spacing on each side of each line. So that would center this one and then this one, you know, so you, whatever the, 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 the uh, material is on this side is what you would set on this side. And that would just make it even on each side. So, and sometimes you have to make small adjustments to that. So again, I'm just using the large spacing to start. And then I've got a little wiggle room here. So I have to figure out what that space is. And I think it's a four to the M. But again, I don't wanna have to squeeze that in. So I take out the M and can put this in. Oh, and that feels too tight. So I'm gonna try a five. It's too tight, I can't force that. Don't wanna force it. So I need a five to the M. And now when I put that in, there's still a little bit of wiggle room there. So it's just a hair. And here's where I'm gonna use my brass. So I'm gonna take out that three again, and I'm gonna use my brass, which is the one point, and then I'm gonna move it back between this bigger spacing. And then I'm gonna put my last one in. And again, I love that feeling where there's a resistance there, but I'm not having to force it down. And that's perfect, just, just enough. There's no shake, there's no wiggle there. And then I'm gonna set my next line of letting. And then I'm gonna set my last couple of words. So I put my M in, in place. And then I set the two words, I hope. I in a space. And then my period. Okay. And that's your last line. And there's no space between the last letter and a the punctuation mark, the E. I mean, after the E, there's a period, and it's just right there. All right, so then I can fill in with spacing for the rest of this line. And this is where if you have quads, you can use larger spacing here to fill in because you've got so much. 
there's options for that. If you really need um, to use your big spacing, you can. So again, I used a bunch of M's and now I get to the end of the line and that doesn't fit. So I'll back up and grab an M. And then I think I can even, I think I can get a three to the M in there. So I'm gonna go back one more. And that's feeling a little snug. So I'm gonna take it out, take out the big one so I can get that in place. And then let's see what it feels like. Oh, that's too tight. All right, so I'll take, take back that three and use a four. And that goes in, but again, there's a little room there and I feel like probably a copper is gonna go there just enough. So I take out the three of the M and sometimes that copper, I'll just use the flat of my thumb and let it stick to it because it wants to, I don't wanna bend it. Put that in and again, that's a little, I could probably use, I could probably use a brass there, but there's no jiggle. So I'm gonna go with that. That seems good to me. And then the last thing I do is put my slug in, in place. So now I've got my job stick with my type in place. And for today, I'm just gonna use my galley tray. I will empty my galley tray, put it back, put all the spacing back where it belongs into the cabinet. And then I'm gonna put this on my galley tray and I'm gonna use a magnet today. I'm not gonna demonstrate tying up, but we're gonna save that for another time. Normally I would slide this off and tie up using string, um, but I'm gonna demonstrate that at another time. Today we're gonna, because there's not a lot of people in the class, I just want people to know that I would normally tie up, <laughs> um, but there's not a lot of people in the class are using the shop right now. So we're gonna just use a magnet here, put it on our galley tray, and store it until we're gonna print next week. So that's your typesetting lesson. And there you go. All right, thanks, bye.